We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for continuing to keep us, Father, to continue to wrap your arms around us, to continue to hold us, Father, like only you can. We thank you for your protection, Father, from danger seen and unseen, oh God. We thank you, Father, for standing in the gap for us, Father, for protecting us, Father, in, in situations where we didn't even know we were in danger, God. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Lord, because there's no one like you, God, because there's no one like you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just can't thank you enough. You continue, Father, to shine your face upon us, Father. You continue, Father, to allow us to open our hearts, Father, to receive you, Father, to receive what it is that you have for us, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We just can't thank you enough. There are so many wonderful things that you have done in our lives. And if you never do another thing, you've already done enough. And I will continue to thank you and give you the praise. Hey! Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, God, you're so worthy. You're so worthy, Lord. You're so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Ah. Thank you, Father. We thank you in advance for this worship experience. We thank you in advance, Father. We thank you for resting upon us here. We thank you, Father, for each and every participant here. Father. We thank you, Father, that you're going to get the glory. That you're going to get the glory. Because it belongs to you and only you. You, only you and only you. Hey. Hallelujah. Hey. And while we're here, we're going to give you a yes, Lord. Yeah, 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 yes. Oh. Open my mouth and say yes. I'll open my heart and say yes. Yeah, 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 yes. Yes, to your will and to your way, Lord. I submit my. Every part, Father, every corner. 
honor, Father, of our heart and our mind. We submit to you, Lord. We know we can be stubborn sometimes. Mm. Hallelujah, but we know the yes in him will release some things. The yes in him. Mm. Yes. Just need to tell him yes and give him every part. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Whew. You're so worthy, God. You're so worthy. Thank you, Lord. way in this place, God. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. Woo! <sighs> Woo! <laughs> yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's just so good. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Thank you, Lord. Well, good morning and welcome to the city of Zion, the Mount Zion Church, where Talmadge J. Thomas is the pastor. We invite you to like and share this worship experience and leave your praise and worship in the comments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go ahead and type hallelujah. Go ahead and show those lifted hand emojis. Go ahead and say glory to God. Go ahead and say you're worthy, Lord. Go ahead and say you've been so good, Father. Go ahead and say there's nothing like you, oh God. and we've already begun. So just continue with your worship. Continue with your praise. And we are going to get our favorite scripture, one of our favorite scriptures. I'm going to give you time to get your favorite scripture in hand. And those of you who are worshiping virtually, make sure you put your scripture in the comments. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, hey, you're worthy, God. You're worthy, Lord. Hey. Woo. Yes, God. Yes, God. Woo. Everybody ready? Woo. You may begin. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who has made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Father, we thank you. Hallelujah. Begin just to put your scripture in the atmosphere. Begin to pray your scripture. Father, we thank you for the shout unto you, oh God. We thank you for the joy in our hearts, Father. Hallelujah. 
Thank you for the joy. For the joy of the Lord is our strength, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to worship. We thank you, Father, for, for the joyful songs given unto you, O oh God. We, we thank you, Lord, that you made us, Father. That you made us, Father. That you made us each individually and unique, O oh God. You know every part of us, Father, and we thank you for that, God. We thank you for, for being able to enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. And we thank you, Father, that we can clap our hands, oh God. We thank you that we have the opportunity to lift our hands. We thank you that your love endures forever.
comes from Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6, in the NIV version. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to Potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to Potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hand. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you? Israel, as this pot does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. Let us pray. Lord, we come to you with a heart of gratitude. We come to you, Lord God, with a mind and heart of repentance, not just in word, but in deed. We submit to you every name of the sick, the broken and the grieving in our church, in our family, in our communities to you. We know that there is nothing that can supersede your healing power. And on this day, we call out to you, Abba, of all to see about your children. We need you in the earth to transform the crooked paths that we have made out of disobedience. We exalt you for extending your grace, your loving kindness and mercy that we don't deserve. Lord, let our lives continually be on the potter's will. Let us understand that this is not our will, but your will be done. Make the cry of our people, Lord God, that we will look to you, Lord God, for guidance. We ask that you touch the servant of the word today, oh God, and that you impact the message, Lord God, which transcends the city limits, the internet, oh God, the hearts of those that are in need of a rhema word. We thank you in advance for the manifestation of the word. Bless the man, oh God, of this house. Touch his positions, Lord God, that he is lifting up to you. Keep his mind, strengthen his body, and cover his house, oh God. Lord, you are good, you are great, and you are magnificent, and we just bless you on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 How many can say his word is good? I don't know about you, but I can say his word is good. Hallelujah. It teaches us. It guides us. It reaches to us in those dark places. Hallelujah. So we're just grateful for the word of God and that he left it for us, that it would guide us, that it would teach us, that it would help us. Hallelujah. And it's our responsibility to hide it in our hearts. Amen.
praise and declare his word is in my heart. Every worshiper in this room and those that are watching, you ought to declare that his word is in my heart. David says it like this, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you and against heaven. For the next several moments, lift your hands and open your mouth. It's a good day to be in church. Somebody ought to thank God that he kept you all night Saturday. And then early this morning, he gave you another chance. Come on, lift those hands. Open up your mouth. And begin to speak something to him that defines how you feel about him. Come on, every worshiper, open up your mouth and begin to magnify the name of our God. If you could just think back over the stuff that God has already brought you through, I want you to open up your mouth and bless him with all the stuff you've already survived. Look at your neighbor, tell him, I'm not going to wait till the battle's over. But I'm going to shout right now. Look at me, tell me I'm not going to wait till the battle's over. But I'm going to shout right now. Look at that neighbor tell me if you only knew the stuff I've been through. If you only knew the stuff I have to fight through just to make it to church. You'd help me praise God. The Bible says, let everything. Y'all know I'm home with the city of God. Fact about telling me, let everything. Fact of praise are telling me, I just had a flashback about what the Lord
hands are lifted, your mouth is open. Lord, we thank you for how wonderful you are. We thank you that it's another Sunday morning that you let us come in your house. Thank you that you didn't let us die Saturday night. But you touched us and gave us another chance. And Lord, for that we say thank you. Thank you for those that are watching online and those that made it to the house. I pray, God, that you would stand in my body, that you would think with my mind, that you would speak with my tongue, that, God, you would get the glory out of what we do. Heal someone, save someone, deliver someone, and encourage the body of Christ. And we will be careful to give your name the praise and the glory that's already yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, clap those hands, open up your mouth, and celebrate the name of the Lord. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not. The name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous run into it and they are saved. We are excited to be at the city of Zion this morning. Can we thank God for this second Sunday in February that God has blessed us and just gave us another chance. I want you to help me to honor my friend and my brother from another mother, the Honorable Bishop Candidate Talmadge Javon Thomas. Help me thank God for him. I am thankful to the Father that he has allowed me uh, to be in the same lifespan as one of his best and that God has gifted me to be the friend to someone as incredible as him. God knows how to give you what you need even though you may not get necessarily what you want. And I'm thankful to the Father that he knew that I needed Talmadge Javon Thomas and I celebrate God for him and for uh, the leadership here at the city of Zion and to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and in creation. Can we thank God for this music aggregation who has blessed us this morning? I just love to see people who love God and who enjoy what it is that they are doing and they just don't love God but they enjoy doing what they do to the honor and glory of God. It was not about show, it was about honoring him. And we salute all of you, even the minstrels of this house. We thank God for the oil that is in this room. The book of Jeremiah chapter 18, Jeremiah chapter 18 is um, where I want to lift for a few moments and uh, you all are not starving for preaching. Uh, you have an international preacher in your pulpit every single Sunday and I want him to know that by inviting me in the words of Dr. James Perkins, you have just not placed the crown on my head. You have placed one above my head and my prayer is someday I'll grow tall enough to wear it. Uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 18 when you got it, shout, I've got it. Uh, it's going to be on the screen. This is what it says. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. 
Then the word of the Lord came to me saying, O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter, saith the Lord? Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in mine hand, O house of Israel of Israel. Look at verse number four. I want to put my anchor down there in verse number four. And this is what verse four says. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred. It was marred in the hand of the potter. So he chose to do something significant with it. What did he do? The scripture says he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make it. The clay was marred. It was marred in the hand of the potter and he chose to do with it what he wanted to do with it. So he made it again another vessel. It was marred in the hand of the potter Nita, but he decided against the consequences of the vessel that he would make it again another vessel and he took pleasure in doing it. He did not do it grudgingly. It was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make it. It was marred in the hand of the potter. It was not outside of his possession. It was marred in his hand. So he decided to do something different with it. He made it again another vessel. I want you to wave at that neighbor for the first time and say, neighbor, I'm thankful that he made me again. Look at somebody else and say, neighbor, I'm thankful that he made me again. I'm going to talk as the Lord shall guide from the thought, the blessing of being made over. The, the blessing of being made over. Settle your saddles for 17 minutes. The blessing of being made over. Professor Walter Brueggemann teaches us that it is important for us to understand the identity crisis that every believer goes through in route to become who they're supposed to be. That throughout the all senses of life that every person that is shapen by the hand of God must go through levels of creativity and levels of the process in order for them to become who God says they're supposed to become. He says it is in that place of identity crisis that God shapes and identifies what our true character is supposed to be and he does it by withdrawing us from the senses of chaos and drama so that he can make us strong and powerful until we look like him. The Bible says that when he shall appear we shall be just like him when he shall come in a moment in the twinkling of an eye that we shall be just like him. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm convinced that all of us under the sound of my voice are individuals who are grateful that throughout all the stuff that we have been through that God has kept his hand on us. Um, the truth is the reason that we have not fallen apart as we could have and the reason where we have not lost all of the senses that we do have left is because we know that in the scheme of it all that God was still taking care of us. God was making a way out of no way. God was healing us in areas that we didn't even know we were sick. God was raising
saving us from stuff we didn't even know we were drowning in and the blessing is that God never leaves us where we are when you read this particular story is an interesting piece of literature because throughout Jeremiah it shows us that when God has a thought towards you he's not going to allow the circumstances around you to keep you from the place that you're supposed to be it does not matter how difficult how disdain how troubling how despairing the things that it is that you must go through he teaches us that when God has a plan for you no demon in hell can keep you from your miracle he says to Jeremiah before I formed you I knew who you were before I placed you in the womb of your mother I already identified you called you and set you apart so everything that you go through is only a part of the process and ladies and gentlemen I'm convinced that when Jeremiah was born in 655 BC in Anathoth that God had a plan for his life and ladies and gentlemen you ought to praise God because if God had a plan for Jeremiah's life you ought to shout because you know he's got one for you 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 ought to praise him there because with all the stuff that you've had to fight through you are still alive clothed in your right mind because God has a plan for your life you did not lose out you did not lose your mind you did not lose your senses but you held it together under pressure because God has a plan for you and every praise of ladies and gentlemen ought to open your mouth and celebrate the fact that God has a plan for your life that's why the devil tried but he didn't win that's why the storms came but I survived that's why the trouble came but I got out of it because God has a plan for my life and brothers and sisters you ought to take a few moments and praise God for the fact that in the midst of all that you had to see you were not bombed by what you saw because you knew who you were look at that neighbor wave at him for the second time and say neighbor I'm not bothered by what I see because I know who I am and when you know who you are you don't let any demon or devil or witch or warlock try to stand in your way and keep you from the miracle that you know that God has with your name on it and I need every believer to open your mouth and declare I'm blessed because God decided to make me over. I'm shouting not because I've got everything that I need. I'm shouting because God keeps making a way out of no way and turning my world upside down. 655 BC, BC that he's born in Anathoth. His ministry starts in 627 BC, ends in 580 BC. His first assignment with all of his anointing is not a place that matches who he thinks he is. What you got to understand is that sometimes God will put you in predicaments that may not match who you thought you were. It's amazing when sometimes it feels like your anointing does not match your assignment. Sometimes Sometimes God puts you in assignments that appear to be beneath your anointing. But I need to pause here to find every anointed praiser that would open your mouth and thank God for the anointing that's on your life. Would you wave up that neighbor for the third time and say, neighbor, I'm grateful for the anointing that's on my life. And because I know I'm anointed, there's an assassin and assigned to my assignment to take me out ladies and gentlemen you got to understand that when you are anointed when you are called by God when you are assigned by God you realize that God is doing something for you that you could not do for yourself his ministry starts y'all get this God anointed him called him in his mother's womb but there were times when he said I can't handle the pressure of my assignment I'm trying to find some real 
your shouters that would thank God for the fact that you survived pressure and you did not survive it because of you. You survived it because you know there's an anointing on your life. Look at that neighbor behind you and tell them there's an anointing on my life. That's why I'm not lost my mind. That's why I ain't cuss nobody out. That's why I'm still sane because the anointing that's on my life the problem ladies and gentlemen I've discovered is that when you read this particular passage is that God anoints him in his mother's womb he gets dealt with by the people that he's called to serve because they can't handle the level of his anointing and they try to bring him to their level because every time you try to get to a new place in God there's always a joker around you that would try to mimic and try to diminish the anointing that's on your life but there's a praiser that ought to open your mouth and thank God for the fact that you know you are anointed. I need you to find the praiser behind you and say neighbor you better be glad I'm anointed because because I'm anointed there's some stuff I just won't do anymore. There's some things I just won't say anymore because I am anointed. The text says, y'all, here it is. The text says that God gives him an assignment. He says, I don't want the assignment. The people are pressuring me. I know what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop saying your name. I'm going to stop mentioning you. I'll never say your name again because ever since I connected with you, I keep getting in trouble. People are trying to kill me and drag me through the mud. They're talking about me, putting me down. I'm not going to say your name again. But when he got by himself, he felt something steering on the inside. And he said, I knew I wasn't going to say it again, but it's like fire in my bones. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I came to find the fire praisers that's been going through some stuff, but you got fire on the inside. I'm trying to find a screamer that would open your mouth and shout, I got fire on the inside text says here is y'all in chapter 18 then the word of the Lord the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my words stay with me settle your saddles for a moment we about to have church he says arise go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my word then the word the word of the Lord I need somebody to pause here parenthetically and open your mouth and thank God that you don't have everything that you want but you got a word I'm trying to find my crowd I need a screamer to open your mouth and declare I may not have everything that I want but I got a word and as long as I got a word I've got everything that I need I'm trying to find a screamer that would open up your mouth and shout like you've lost your mind I got a word from God I got a word, I got a word. And there's a praise that ought to shout because you know that the only reason you made it is not because of the car you drive or the house you live in or the person you're connected to, but you made it because you got a word. Look at that neighbor and point at them. Wave at them for the fourth time and say, neighbor, I got a word. That's why I'm shouting like I'm shouting. That's why I'm praising God like I am because in the midst of it all, I got a word. He says, go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my word. There, I will cause you there. I will cause you there. I, there, there, there. I will cause you to there. I will there. I will cause you to hear my there. I there, there. I will cause you to hear my word. I, I need you to find the praiser behind you and say, neighbor, all I'm looking for in the next 30 days is my there. The only thing I'm looking for is my there. I'm not trying to find a new house or a car. I'm just trying to find my there. I'm not trying to find a new job. I'm just trying to find my there. Somebody shout, do it Dr. Bree, do it. I'm trying to do the best that I can. Turn me up please. Ladies and gentlemen, what you got to understand is that God is doing more for you than you could ever do for yourself and all you got to do is find your there. 
find, find you there. Find somebody and tell them, find you're there. That was a wrong neighbor. Find somebody else and tell them, find your there. Don't you stop at your that. You better find your there. Because when you get to your there, that's when God's going to start talking to you. And every screamer ought to open your mouth and start praising God for your there. there. And there, I will cause you to hear my word I'm moving you y'all shout right here from distractions the reason you have not heard me is because you've been distracted by the voices around you I'm going to move you from distractions arise go down to the potter's house and there I will cause you to hear my word. So I arose. Hey. And I went down as God instructed. Here it is, y'all. We're about to tear the club up. He's in Jerusalem. Southeast Jerusalem. Near the pot's herd gate where potters dump their unwanted goods. He's anointed, but his first assignment is to a dump. He's anointed, but God doesn't send him to a palace. God sends him southeast Jerusalem. God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Y'all are about to shout right here. When you are anointed, God can put you around stuff that you don't like. When you are anointed, God will put you around stuff that nobody else wants. But God will give you grace to handle it. I'm trying to find a screamer that would open up your mouth and scream like you've lost your mind. He'll give me grace. To handle it. So I go. I'm anointed. But I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed because I don't understand what God is doing. How do you, Pastor Dorinda Davis, shout for a God that you don't understand what he's up to? How can I trust the God I can't trace? How do I shout when I don't know what he going to do next? I can do it because I can trust his track record. If he did it before, he'll do it again. I need a screamer to open up your mouth. Shout like you lost your mind. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Oh. So I go. I'm obedient with apprehension. I, I'm annoyed, but I'm anointed. I've got assassins after my assignment. And God says, leave where you are. Go to the potter's house. How does he know where to go? Everybody in southeast Jerusalem are potters. But he knows where to go. When God speaks to you, you don't need confirmation from somebody else. I'm bothered by pseudo-religious people who try to cross-pollinate the word of God with the mysticism of prophets. If God said it, somebody shout, it's already done. When God tells you where to go, you ain't got to ask questions. God speaks 
plain and clear. And all you got to do is follow where he says. How? How does he know where to go? He says, you know, I feel this, Lucretia. When you're there, when I start speaking again. You'll know that you've reached your there when I start speaking again. When he gets there, he goes inside and God says, what do you see? I got nine minutes left. Somebody shout, do it, Dr. Bree, do it. I'm trying to do the best I can. What do you see? And I came to tell every worshiper and every shouter in the sanctuary and that's watching online, whatever you see is what you're going to get. If you can't see it, you can't have it. He says, what do you see? He says, I see, I see a potter. I see a potter working on the wheel. I see a potter working on the wheel. A potter that's working on the wheel. He's got a big wheel and a little wheel and a foot pedal. And the big wheel is making momentum for the little wheel. And he's working on pottery. What else do you see? I see him working on clay. I see him making clay. I see him doing it again and over and over again. Where is the clay? It's in the potter's hand. But there's something strange. What's strange, Jay? What's strange is the clay that's in his hand is marred. The Greek word for marred means it is blemished. It has a character flaw, but he does not discard it. He does not throw it away. He picks it up, makes it again another vessel. Here it is, y'all. It's marred. It's blemished. It's got a flaw, but he doesn't throw it away. It's jacked up but it's not being thrown away. It's messed up, but it's not being thrown away. Somebody ought to shout that when you messed up, he didn't throw you away. When you fell short, he didn't throw you away. When you came short of his glory, he didn't throw you away. What did he do? He picked me up. He made it again another, it's marred, it's marred, it's marred, y'all, but catch the text, y'all. It's marred where? In the hand of the potter. It's, it's marred. We're about to have a little church. It's marred, but it's in the hand of the potter. It, it's got a flaw, but it's in the hand of the potter. It's jacked up, but it's got, it's, it's got stuff on it. It's messed up. Should be discarded, but he doesn't throw it away. He picks it up. Marred, blemished stuff. Puts it back on the wheel. Every person that's in this room and that's watching ought to shout because you're marred. I, I ain't, I'm not talking to perfect people. I'm trying to find some people who would admit the fact you've got some stuff wrong with you. Look at that neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm marred. But I'm still, get this, y'all, manageable. Somebody shout, I'm marred. But I'm still manageable I got a flaw but my flaw is not fainted yet I got a flaw but my flaw is not final God's still working on me I need somebody to open up your mouth and declare he's still working on me what the enemy meant for evil God's about to make it work for my good, open your mouth, scream, I'm marred, but I'm manageable, because I'm still in his hands, I need a screamer to open up your mouth, and shout like you've lost your mind, I'm still in his hands, I messed up, but I'm in his hand would you open your mouth and scream like you've lost your mind I'm marred but I'm still manageable somebody open your mouth and scream do it Dr. Bree do it I'm trying 
trying to do the best that I can. It's marred, but it's in his hand. Somebody open up your mouth and declare, I'm marred. I've been hurt, but I'm still in his hand. Get this, y'all. I'm marred, but I'm manageable. But secondly, y'all, I'm marred, but God has the power to move me beyond my marginal behavior. Stuff I used to do, I won't do anymore. And the places I used to go, I won't go anymore. Because God is moving me from beyond my marginal behavior and doing something amazing. Therefore, I don't respond like I used to respond. And I don't do like I used to do. And I don't say what I used to say because God is moving me beyond my marginal behavior. And the stuff I used to get mad over is the stuff I now shout over because I'm still in his hand. And what God will do is even though I'm marred, I'm still manageable. Secondly, I'm marred, but God can move me beyond my marginal behavior. But then lastly, this is where we shout together. I'm marred, but God has the power to give me a miraculous blessing. Would you find the praiser and wave at them for the fifth time and say, neighbor, I'm marred, but I'm manageable. I'm marred, but God can move me from my marginal behavior and God can give me a miraculous blessing. Can we pause and open our mouths and thank God for the blessing that's on the way? Can we scream for the miracle that's on the way? Look at that neighbor and say, neighbor, I've been through some stuff, but I made it. I've been dragged down, but I made it. I've been pulled from side to side, but I made it. I didn't make it because of myself, but I made it because God had his hand on my life. Anybody open your mouth, scream. God is still working on me. I've been through it, but I came out. And when I came out, I came out all right. Look at somebody and tell them, all right, all right. All right, all right. All right, all right. That's how I came out. All right, all right. With my hands lifted, my mouth open, declaring, look where the Lord brought me from. And God speaks again and says, Jay, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Somebody ought to shout, I'm in his hands and I put it all in his hands find somebody wave at him and say neighbor I put it all in his hands my stress in his hands my struggle in his hands my problem in his hands this and that I put it all in his hands open your mouth scream high put it in his hands yay clay gets hard clay hardens up and God says I can do one or two things that one way to get what I need and in order to get the clay back on the 
wheel. The potter has to take the clay and break it, crush it, destroy it, and make it over. Hey, when I was growing up, I had a porcelain piggy bank. I loved my porcelain piggy bank. My daughters had Mickey Mouse piggy bank. Hey, they would put money in the top, but there was a flap at the bottom. And whatever they put in, they could pull the flap and get it out. But I love my porcelain piggy bank. When I put money in, there was only two ways I could get it out. I had to either shake it or break it. Somebody ought to open your mouth early this Sunday morning and thank God for the shaking. He shook you so he didn't have to break you. Open your mouth. Shout thank you for the shaking. Thank you for the turmoil. Open your mouth. Shout. I made it. Good evening, city of Zion. May the Lord bless you real good. Before I leave, I need every screamer to open your mouth. Scream. I'm persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Full of trouble, but not despair. Perplexed, but not distressed. I am a vessel of the Lord through many dangers, toils, and snares. I, 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 I've already come. It was His grace that brought me safe this far. So I'm shouting because I'm in his hand. Wave at your neighbor for the last time and say, neighbor, I'm blessed, not stressed. I'm blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed when I rise. When I lay down, blessed is my basket. Blessed is my family. Everything about me is blessed. Good evening, y'all. But I got one question for you. Won't he do it? Won't he make a way? Won't he fight battles? Won't he open doors. Won't he do it? Yes! 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 I tried it and he made a way. Yes! 
For the first time, you're submitting yourself to be molded by the potter's hand. If you are accepting Christ for the first time, we want to help you begin your journey with Christ. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that and God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. If that's you, there's a form pinned to the screen. You can fill it out. Send it to us. We will reach for you and help you begin your journey with Christ. You may be searching for a church home. If that's the case, Pastor Thomas J. Thomas wants to be your pastor and we want to be your church. Or you may just need to agree with someone in prayer. There is power in the prayer of faith. There is power in the prayer of agreement. In this atmosphere, in this space where we are, there is power for God to do whatever it is you need right now. Go ahead and complete that form, and we will pray for you. We will reach for you. God bless you. It is now time to give. We have spent all of this time in worship, and we are going to continue our worship in giving because we do know that giving is worship. There's three different ways that you can give, and those are Moving across the bottom of the screen for you, go ahead and take advantage of one of those ways. You can text the word citizen to the number that's on the screen. You can mail your gift. You can cash up your gift to the ID that's on there. However you choose to give, remember that it's not equal in giving, but it is equal in sacrifice. God bless you. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? Glory to your wonderful name, Jesus. You are indeed worthy of it all, all of our worship, all of our praise. You have all the authority, and we will continue to be intentional when we bless your holy and righteous name. Thank you for seeing us as you created us and not letting our hangups change your mind about your plans for us. Thank you, Lord, for the redo. Your mercy upon us is evident that you are truly faithful to your promises, and your perfect love endures forever and ever. As we move into our purpose place, Father, keep us on the wheel. Make us over every time we get off track. We need more of you to fill our hearts and our homes. We give you permission to be Lord over each and everything that concerns us, for your grace is more than sufficient. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray, believing that we have whatever it is that we prayed for. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face to smile and shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. May he bless you in your labor and in your leisure, in your laughter and in your tears, until that day when we shall meet at the feet of Jesus, where there will be no fun.